Heavier than water solids are removed from the primary, secondary, and tertiary systems. Now let's talk about how those sludges are concentrated, treated, and then disposed of. Primary sludge from the first settling tank is pumped through a machine called a cyclone degritter that removes sand and other dense solids. The grit is dropped into a truck for disposal in a landfill. The degraded primary sludge goes to our gravity thickeners, along with the waste activated sludge from our secondary system and the degraded tertiary sludge. The thickeners are cylindrical tanks with a funnel-shaped bottom. Gravity causes the solids from all the sludges to further settle, concentrating them. Squeegee-like scraper bars go along that cone, pushing the solids down to the bottom where they concentrate. The supernate, now clear of most solids, overflows the tank, goes back to the head of the plant, mixing with the raw wastewater coming in from the sanitary sewers. What's pumped out from the bottom of the cone typically is 4% solids, and that's about 200 times more concentrated than what came in in the influent. The thickened solids are pumped into the primary anaerobic digester. They are much larger cylindrical tanks with bottoms that slope to a point. The primary and secondary digesters are steel tanks that each hold 1.5 million gallons. You'll remember in the secondary system, we used aerobic bacteria to treat the wastewater. In the digesters, we use anaerobic bacteria, those that live without oxygen, to treat the sludges. Now, these like to live in a temperature range of about 98 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, it's not a coincidence that that's the same temperature as most mammals. You and I, in our intestines, have these bacteria in a symbiotic relationship. We give them a warm, safe place to live with lots of food and no oxygen. What do they do for us? They help us break down large organic molecules into small ones that we can actually absorb into our bodies to live and grow. Without these bacteria in our bodies, we'd starve. Aerobic creatures breathe oxygen and they exhale carbon dioxide. Anaerobic creatures exhale not carbon dioxide, but something called biogas, and that's about 70% methane. Methane can be burned as a fuel, it's flammable. It's basically producing a renewable energy resource for us. We can make hot water or electricity using the methane. It produces about 25 to 35 percent of our energy needs. That saves us a lot of money. Methane is a very potent greenhouse gas, so if we're not able to utilize all of the methane we're making, we have to flare it rather than release it into the atmosphere. These anaerobic digesters can process large quantities of concentrated organic waste. The treatment facility often receives waste deliveries from local restaurants, dairy factories, septic tanks, and other waste plants. Truck wastes help us in two ways. They're bringing in organic material for the bacteria to make more biogas, saving us money. The producers of the waste have to pay us a fee to treat and dispose of their waste. That's an income source. Income, lower expenses, better bottom line, helps the folks having to pay those sewer use fees too. So we were wondering, is there a way we can free up more organic material from that fully digested secondary sludge? Because if we could, it would decrease the cost at the landfill and increase our savings through more biogas production. We were able to get a grant to put in a full-scale Fenton reactor in our digester building. This takes hydrogen peroxide and mixes it with the fully digested sludge, and it does do what we expect. Uh, it makes more organic material available, so that goes back into the primary digester to make more biogas. So the question is, is the savings from decreased costs at the landfill and increased production of biogas more than the cost of that system? The answer is yes. So a Fenton reactor actually is a very economical way to improve a digester's performance. The amount of sludge uh, in the secondary digester is constantly increasing and we have to remove it before the tank fills up and overflows back to the head of the plant. We send our biosolids to a landfill, however, they only take 20% solids, and what's in the digester is about 4% solids. It looks like a thick, dark milkshake. So what we do is we send it to a belt press to squeeze more water out of it, get it up to that 20% solids. A chemical polymer is added to clump up the sludge as it's pumped onto the belt press. The water released by the polymer drips through the porous belt. A second belt then sandwiches the sludge and squeezes water out as the belt travels over a series of rollers the pressure increases the squeezing as the rollers get smaller. The solids left on the belt, called sludge cake, are scraped off and will be sent to the landfill. So each week we send four to five tractor trailer loads of sludge with a little bit of grit to the landfill. 
And the landfill does charge us by the ton, so anything we can do to lighten the load will save money. Vent reactors save money. Water's heavy, so if we can increase the percent solids, decrease the amount of water in the sludge cake, that saves us money. So now you've seen how we process sludges and turn them into an inner uh, stable biosolid that goes off to the landfill. So in closing, I'd like to summarize what we do here at the plant. Coming into the plant, we have dirty water, trucked waste, we bring in treatment chemicals, and we buy energy. Now we're removing contaminants from wastewater and the sludges. We are producing biogas, a renewable energy, and we are destroying the pathogens that can cause human disease. Finally, we are recycling clean water back into the environment. So that wraps this up. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Also, if you'd like to have a tour of the plant, you can feel free to write or call and schedule that. Hey, thanks for watching. Ed, I brought you a little gift to celebrate the completion of the project. I hope Whoa, you like it. Whoa, thanks. A little cake. Sludge cake. So thoughtful, Dan. I think I'll fertilize a tree with it, though. That's probably the best use for this stuff.